If you're a maker, then you undoubtedly have all kinds of ideas swirling around in your head. And it doesn't matter what it is. It could be any kind of project, a purse, a basket, a quilt. <laughs> well, here's the thing. If you don't write it down or put it on paper, it tends to fly away. I sketch out so much when it comes to quilting and projects that I want to do in the future. But friends, can I tell you, this is how I roll, <laughs> or rather how I did roll. I decided to make something a little bit prettier than this bag full of my colored pencils. I'm gonna share with you how I did it, so if you wanna make one, you go right ahead. Enough talking already. Let's get busy putting our ideas on paper. For this quill inspo project on the go, you're going to need an inside fabric, an outside fabric, and you will need some type of interfacing. Here I used a really super stiff interfacing. It was the last of what was in my stash of it, so I wanted to use it up. It does have a glue backing on it where you can fuse it to your fabric to one side. So I'm using a black fabric here with speckles on it. I figured as I'm going in and out with my pencils that in case I get any, you know, marks on it, it's not going to show up. So I'm taking the inside fabric and I'm fusing it to that uh, stiff interfacing. And you'll see here in a second, it fuses beautifully. I was really shocked. I had forgotten how well that it actually fused. But you could probably use quilt batting or something like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be super stiff like what I'm using. I figured though the stiffness would help out because I had my clipboard that I was going to be putting in here. Now take a marking utensil and longwise on your project, mark the middle all the way down. If you don't have one of these chalk liners, I will link it below. You will absolutely love it on dark fabrics. For this project, I did use half inch elastic. Now I used three long pieces that will be longer than the actual project itself. That's so that when you do the slack on it, the give that you have enough to cover the entire project. The first thing you're going to do is take one edge of your elastic and line it up right on that white line that you made longwise in the middle of the project. I did pop a couple pins there just to help me while I made some marks. Make a mark somewhere right in the center somewhere and then we're going to work from that one mark outward on both sides. From that mark that you made, just random mark, you're going to measure three quarters of an inch over and mark it. And you're going to push your ruler again on the mark you just made, three quarters of an inch and mark it again. And you're going to do that all the way down the one side and then swap it and where you first made the mark you're going to measure three quarters of an inch and mark it all down the other side of the elastic. Once you have all of your three quarters of a mark on all of your elastic all the way down they're separated by three quarters inch then you're going to in between each three quarter inch mark you're going to find the middle and you're going to just put a tiny dash mark. And this is a heat erasable pen too, so I can just iron over it after I'm all done and they will disappear. So that tiny mark is in between each three quarters of an inch mark. Take it to your sewing machine and find the middle somewhere. And on that first three quarter of an inch mark, you're going to just back stitch and stitch that down so that it's solid on that piece of fabric. And you wanna make sure though that your elastic is laying right along that white line that you made though. Don't forget that part. Now you're gonna to move to the right. You're going to do the next three quarter inch mark, but you wanna make sure that you push it a little bit to give it some give because we want our pencil to fit. I barely pushed that elastic to the left to give it a gap right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stitch right along that three quarter inch line. And you can see right there, there is the opening and the pencil will go right in there. But you do have to make sure that you put that tiny bit of gap in there, but not too big of a gap because your pencil will fall out. 
you're going to continue stitching like that on all of your long lines, your three quarter inch marks, all the way down one side and then the other side. Now watch here, I give it just a tiny bit of a push with my thumb, just enough to give it a tiny bit of a gap. I mean, it's very slight. Here I'm just showing you where that line, that white line is compared to how you are looking at it. And here I'll go ahead and mark it again real quick. It's right so the on the bottom side that you're looking at. My elastic is lined up right there. Now you're going to take your other two pieces of elastic and lay them on both sides of that middle piece. There is approximately two inches between each of those pieces of fabric or three inches away from farthest edge to farthest edge. And that's the marks that you wanna make when you are laying out your elastic to get them ready to take them to the sewing machine. So I'm just going to take my white chalk and then on the outer side of each of those pieces of elastic, I'm going to mark all the way across. So that way, that will help me at the sewing machine not to get, you know, a wavy piece of elastic sewn on to this project. Now that bottom elastic or the top one you're looking at there from your view, you wanna make that same mark along the edge on that elastic as well, just mirror imaging what you just did on the other elastic. Remember two inches apart or three inches from edge of elastic to other edge of elastic. So here's a visual of what we're going to be sewing actually on the elastic. Those tiny dash marks that you made, you're not gonna sew on. But you are, however, going to visualize the top elastic and on the bottom elastic, that dash mark being there. And you're going to sew the bottom and the top elastic down where you are visualizing where that little dash mark is that you made. It was too hard to try and put marks on that top and bottom elastic, so if you eyeball it, I think you're gonna be golden. But here you can see where the pencil is on top of the bottom elastic and the top elastic, that is the part that's going to be sewn down. So you're all done sewing that middle piece of elastic that's down your project. Now you're going to work on the top elastic and the bottom elastic. What I'm doing here at the sewing machine is looking at the dash mark straight on. You can't see it on here, but just know I'm looking at it straight on. And then I'm guesstimating on that bottom and top elastic where that dash mark is down. That's where I'm going to sew that elastic on to my project. I know I, it doesn't really show what I'm doing here, I'm so sorry, but I'm hoping that you get the idea of it. You still want to visualize the middle dash mark there, that middle elastic, the dash mark, visualize it. Then look up where your top elastic is and where that dash mark is, that is where you're going to sew that top and bottom elastic on too. So here's a visual of what that looks like after you have sewn some of the top and some of the bottom. You can see here that it makes the pencils go in so nicely. Before when I tried my mock-up, I had them too close together, the rows of elastic, and it came out all weird. I mean, they just did not lay flat at all. So this was the best way to get them to lay totally flat all the way across. Now I did add extra elastic here, you can see, and that was for my pencil sharpener and also for my eraser and my miniature clipboard because I wanted all that to be in this project. Now it's time to figure out where we want our Velcro to attach on our pieces of fabric. So here I'm going to lay it all out just as it would be if I was going to have all my stuff in there and actually fold it in real time and that way it just helps me to know exactly where I want my elastic to be and here I'm pointing to you know where my pencil sharpener is because I know I have to account for that when I fold it so I'm thinking of all that right now with velcro you need two long strips and they you know sticky together and this is the sew on velcro and you'll need about 
I'd say 11 inches or so of the Velcro with both pieces. So it just needs to be shy out of the seam allowance of the project. So while we're trying to figure out where the Velcro goes, you only want to pin that Velcro down to the layer that it's going to be sewn to because this isn't going to show up on the outside. That's why we're gonna have all of our stitch marks on the inside, but we're just you know making sure it's where we want it to go though. So I'm just pinning through that top layer there. And then I'm going to fold it and then fold it again to figure out where I want that other piece of Velcro to be attached to. And I'm thinking right there looks good. I don't know. <laughs> Once it looks like it's exactly going to hit right on the other Velcro, then you're gonna go ahead and pin it. Now I'm only pinning it to that out, outer rose fabric. I'm not pinning it all the way through. And you just, you can see right there, I'm showing you that. So you just wanna make sure that you pin only on that side and just make sure it's straight. I had an afterthought here because it was so hard to get that pin to go through that Velcro and just that outer layer. I was thinking you could also get out your Elmer's glue stick and glue that all along there so that it stayed nice for you. I mean, I was having trouble getting my pins through all of that. So you might wanna get out your glue stick for that part. So after you get everything nicely pinned down, that Velcro is nice and solid on the fabric, then you're going to refold it again just to make sure that it's going to fit because that would be terrible if you did all that and then sewed it on and then they didn't match up. So you do wanna make sure that your Velcros match up. I think I might've tested it three or four times, I don't know. <laughs> now you're going to take them to your sewing machine separately and you're going to sew the Velcro down all along the edge there on the one piece and then sew all along the edge on the other piece. Now I did not reinforce really on the Velcro and I'm thinking I should have maybe put a little bit of interfacing behind this outer fabric one since it didn't really have anything, it was just the fabric itself. So you may wanna do that. Um, I did only do just one stitch all the way around and you know I made sure to back stitch and whatnot. So you may want to add like an extra piece of thin interfacing behind the outer fabric one, just a side note. Now it's time to put them right sides together. So what I did was lay them as if they were already done and then flip the other one over so that way I knew that I had, you know, my sides were correct when I go to sew it and turn it right side out and all that, that it was going to be properly, you know, fixed. <laughs> Since I had that really stiff interfacing in here, I went ahead and just grabbed my clips and clipped all the way around. And now what you wanna do is sew a quarter inch around the entire project, leaving about you know five to seven inches open there at the bottom, so that way you're able to turn your work really easily. And here I'm just pivoting it here at the corner and I'm just going around just you know sewing it like normal. Once it's sewn all around and you have your opening, you know, you're going to turn it right side out through that opening. Now you can cut the corners off on your project so that way that when you get it right side out, you can push them out nicely with like a pokey tool or something like that. And you're just going to, you know, make sure that all the seams are laying nice and flat. Now because of that really stiff interfacing, it's going to be a little difficult to do that because it wants to keep flopping up the other way within the seam. So I just took my iron and I manhandled it. Yes, I did. <laughs> and I made sure that it went the way that I wanted it to go because you want to really make sure that those seams are tucked in there in the opening and you wanna make sure that the seams all the way around meet up perfectly. You don't want any one fabric showing on any one side. And here I'm showing you an example of that right here. Make sure you roll that seam out so that it's nice and even all the way around. Then you're going to take it to your sewing machine and tack all that down with a top stitch all around the entire project, being sure to close up that opening from where you turned your work through. Look at how cute that this is. Oh my word, do I have some quilt inspiration on the go for sure. 
Now, I am going to be looking for a clipboard that's small like this, but where the clippy part is more flat because it's too high for this, I think, and if it was more flush to the project, everything would lay a lot better. And also my pencil sharpener. I don't know, I like that it collects, you know, all the shavings in it, and I don't know if I'll be able to find one that's more flat. So I'm gonna be on the lookout for a flatter pencil sharpener that catches the shavings and a flatter clipboard. One side note, you can use the color wheel to help you line up all your colors perfectly from cool colors to warm colors and you know, whatever. Here I'm showing you that these are definitely not going anywhere. They are in there solid. I couldn't be more pleased with this project. I mean, I'm constantly, you know, sitting on the couch or something and watching TV and just doodling on my graph paper. And another side note, you can print out graph paper from the internet if you don't have any. So that's a tip for you. But this is going to be perfect for me. Um, say I'm traveling or whatever, I think it's going to just travel very nicely on a plane or wherever. Let me know in the comments if you think that you might need some quilt and spo on the go too. I would love to hear if you're going to make this or if you did make it or if you have something like this that you pull inspiration from when you know you're thinking about it and you know you don't want to forget about it. This really couldn't have turned out any more perfect than it did. I'm telling you, it opens perfectly, closes, nothing falls out of it. I mean, I am going to totally use this and love it. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.